Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm John R. and I'm your instructor. We've gotten a very enthusiastic response to our many form-folded copper videos. And today I'm going to show you how to turn a Ruger fold into a wearable necklace like one of these two in front of me. It's exactly the same shape, but just moved in two different ways. Let me show you what you're going to need to make these pieces. First, you're going to need a pocket knife, a high contrast permanent marker, a cross peen hammer, a pair of shears, a bench block, two pairs of pliers, obviously your metal, and it's recommended to work with a 25 gauge piece of metal. You can work with a thicker piece, but it's going to take you a lot longer. Then you may also need either chain or threading floss, a few jump rings, a clasp, and you may want to work with some beads. Now, don't forget, you're going to be working with the hammer, so you want to put on your safety glasses. And if you haven't looked at our safety video yet, you might want to do that now. Let me clear some space, and I'll show you the process. Okay, I'm ready to start. Now, I'm going to be working with a larger piece of metal. And this piece of metal has been annealed prior to today. If you don't know what annealing is, check out our annealing video. Once you've annealed the piece, pickle, brass brush, and dry it off, and now you're ready to begin. The first step is to fold this piece of metal in half. Just go along the edge of your bench and just give it a push, and that will start the fold. Once you've got that fold started, just push all the way against the table surface. Now this piece is a little bit thicker, so it takes a little bit more effort. That's about as far as I can get it right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pound it down on top of a hitting surface, and I'm using a simple bench block. Now to do this, I'm just going to use the cross peen hammer. Now the cross peen hammer is the one that has the wedge shape. We're not using this part yet. I'm going to use the flat surface first just to bring the fold down. Now you notice I didn't hit on that folded edge. I don't want to work hard on that edge. Alright, so now that the two halves are pushed together, I'm ready to draw my shape on the metal surface. So I'm going to need my permanent marker for that. Now the best shapes for the Ruger fold are ones that are sort of a crescent moon shape that's very long and elegant. So you may want to start by marking where the highest part of your curve is going to be. And then from each end, just bring up your edge very slowly in a nice smooth arc until you hit that high part. Now if you make a mistake, go ahead and just line over it or draw back in until you get it just right. Once you have your arc, then you can use your metal shears to cut it out. Start from one end and just cut along the line that you drew in the previous step. Once you've cut the shape out, you're ready to begin hitting it with the hammer. Now, the first thing that you want to do is position your bench block in a place where it's comfortable for you to strike. You don't want to engage too much of your body. Just use your arm as an extension of the hammer. What you want to do is start in the middle of the piece and work towards one end using the wedge shape of the hammer. Now don't hit the, cur the folded side. You want to hit just a little bit away from it. The idea is that what we're going to do is we're going to stretch the piece and have it curl around on itself. So watch how I hit it. You're going to strike straight down, but you're going to move the piece under the hammer. So essentially the hammer just stays in one spot and you're moving the piece under it. Now, 
this hammering will close this edge a little bit and it will eventually make the edges turn around on themselves. It's important that you move the piece so that the strike stays at a right angle to the folded edge. I've got some that I've stepped out earlier to show you exactly what you're going to see as you hit your piece. So your first few strikes are going to stretch the piece and curve it around a little bit. Now, in between each of these rounds of hammering, I've annealed the metal. So you can see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six steps. It may actually take you a few more depending on how heavy your hammer is and how hard you're striking the material. Now, if you look at this one right here at the top, you can see that I hit a little bit harder on one side than the other. That's why this side is a little bit more curved. It's okay. You can go back and make corrections until you get it to come around on itself perfectly, just like this one. Once you've gotten this far, you're ready to open up the Ruger fold. So let me set this aside and I'll show you how to do that. Once you've finished hammering on your piece, it'll look a little bit like a pretzel. Now to open it up, you're going to need to use some type of a knife. You're going to need a thin blade to get in between the two layers of metal. Now be, be careful, don't cut yourself. What you want to do is look along this edge and find an area that's open to you and put your knife in and start prying the two parts away from one another by wiggling the knife and sort of cutting towards the center of the piece. Now gently open up the entire shape. Now you've got two sides to do, so be careful and take your time. Now you may want to open the form slightly in order to be able to get at the points. Now one thing I should mention is sometimes you may have problems opening the points and this could be because you may have overheated them during the annealing process and you might have actually melted or fused the ends shut. If that happens, you might be able to shear them off or shear them open. Okay, now I've got this piece slightly wedged apart all the way along its surface. So what I want to do now is to open it up even further. Before I do that, though, I'm going to give each of the ends a little bit of a pull or a tug just to start to create a spiral shape. Okay, so starting in the middle, I'll open up. Remember, wiggle back and forth. And I'm working towards one point and then towards the other. Once you start to get your fold open, you can make a decision as to whether you want it to be a long spiral or a more condensed bead shape. They actually have to go through the bead shape before they become the long spiral. So you can make up your mind sort of as you go along. Alright, so I'm going to pull the spiral out a little bit and let you just take a look at that. It's already looking quite elegant. So I'm going to use my fingers now and I'm going to open up this form even more. I can do this because the material is very thin. Now in this case, I'm going to show you how to do the bead first. As you work with it, you'll have to just massage it into the shape that you want. Now what I'm going for is more of a compressed bead shape at this point, which is where the ends sort of tuck in on themselves. And you have to move it back and forth a little bit to get it exactly where you want it. All right. This one has the basic look that we're going for. I prepared one earlier so you could see exactly what shape I'm going for here. So we want two inverted cone shapes next to each other. And if I turn it this way, you can see where the end just curls in on itself so that it doesn't poke you. Now, 
you can, if you decide that you're not getting a good bead shape, you could actually extend the fold at this point. All you have to do is just grab these ends and start to pull them out. And the Ruger fold likes to turn into a very elongated spiral. Again, it's just a matter of working with it. And if you need to, you can bring out a pair of pliers to help you along the way. I like these flat nose pliers because they let me open up the fold a little bit as I work with it. Take your time. Be careful of any sharp edges. Pulling the fold more open. This is the same piece, only more open than its initial fold, or the opening of the fold. Now if you want to turn this into a wearable, all you have to do is just work these ends so that you push the points back into the fold itself, creating a loop so that you can attach a jump ring. Let me see if I can do that for you here. Now, once you have these loops, it's possible for you to add jump rings to your piece. Now, you have some larger jump rings here. And if you use two pairs of pliers, remember to open up the jump rings the long way rather than opening up the circle. You can just slide a jump ring right in there and that will allow you to make a connection to a chain which will make the piece wearable. Now this color that you see on these pieces was achieved by using a red patination process. It's also possible to turn these green as well. And we do have a video that would show you how to create these patinas as well. Now you know how to turn the Ruger fold into a wearable piece of jewelry. I hope you enjoy this project, have fun making it, and thanks for watching the OnlineJewelryAcademy.com. Be sure to check out our other videos and products. Thanks again.